The goal of the personal statement is not to show that you're an awesome caretaker, that you have the skills necessary to be a doctor. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. What can I help you with? Um, I just have a few questions about the personal statement. Um, All right. And the first- First question I wanted to ask, um, so like one of my most motivation was an activity that I did for why I wanted to become a doctor. And I don't know how I'm going to list it in the activity section and then how to differentiate it in the personal statement. Okay. What kind of activity like, was it? Uh, so I, I'm a CNA, a certified nursing assistant. Yep. Uh, so I was going to have that in my activity section. Okay. But... I, I was unsure of what to write since I spend majority of my personal statement talking about what I did as a CNA and how it um, made me a caretaker, a better caretaker. I'm going to I'm gonna put a pin in the last part of your comment there about being a better caretaker. It's a very common concern that students have of like, well, if I talk about it in my personal statement, how am I going to talk about it in my activities? If I talk about it in my activities, do I have to talk about it in my personal statement? If I, if it, if I, do, if I mark something as most meaningful in my activity section, does that have to be in my personal statement? They are two separate entities on an application. Right? One of them, your personal statement, is why do I want to be a doctor? What is the journey I have been on to get me here today? The activity section is what have I done with my time as a human being since high school for the most part? Not, why do you want to be a doctor? So you can have the same experience being a CNA in your personal statement focused on why you want to be a doctor and in your activity section just focused on the activity and how it's impacted you. Not necessarily to want to be a doctor, but just as a person. So two separate uh, kind of responsibilities for each of the sections. The pin, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the pin that we put in. The last part of your comment was uh, being a CNA and talking about it in my personal statement about how it's, I, f- I forget your exact words, like increase my ability to be a caretaker. The goal of the personal statement is not to show that you're an awesome caretaker that you have the skills necessary to be a doctor, that the experiences that you're talking about in your personal statement have given you the knowledge, skills, et cetera, necessary to be a doctor. That's not the goal of the personal statement. So I just wanna make that loud and clear. The goal of the personal statement is why do you want to be a doctor? Not prove to me that you have the skills necessary to be a doctor. And my next question is, um, I've been told that I should do like a brief introduction in my personal statement about like where I'm from and et cetera. Told to... by who? <laughs> by whom? So I, I can't remember. They were just like, oh, like you should write a little bit more about yourself um, more than like medicine and like where you're from and, you know, kind of your journey so have you read this Uh, i read some chapters of this some chapters some chapters not good enough to read the whole thing (laughs) throw it away (laughs) throw it away some poor book i threw it on the ground um the personal statement is not an autobiography nobody cares where you're from in your personal statement Nobody cares. The personal statement is, why do you want to be a doctor? Not tell me your life story. There are some secondary essays that ask for a biographical, autobiographical statement. I guess I'm ha- I'm having, because I'm always being told, even by the advisors, it needs to be about you and not other people. And Yeah, it is about you and why you want to be a doctor. I just have, I have difficulty in, in my personal statement 
you know, like writing more about me other than like patient, other, like I would write a lot of stories about my interaction with the patient. And then sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm not writing it's, enough. But, but it's, it's your interaction with the patient, not the patient where a lot of students go wrong when they write about clinical experiences in a personal statement is they write all about the patient. Johnny did this and Johnny did that and Johnny recovered and Johnny, 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 Johnny. And oh, I was inspired by Johnny, therefore I want to be a doctor. As the reader, I'm like, I don't see anything about you here. But if you write about your interaction with Johnny while Johnny is a patient, you're writing about you interacting with Johnny. And if you can show the reader that interaction and show the impact that interacting with Johnny had on you, how interacting with Johnny, the impact that it had on him, and then you can make that connection to here's why I want to be a doctor, then that makes sense. And it's about you. Okay, makes sense. Because I was getting scared of, you know, telling too many stories with my interaction with patients. But I, I feel like that makes sense. Now. So so just that comment alone tells me you need to go read my book in totality, not just chapters here <laughs> and there. Because that's the, in my opinion, that's the whole personal statement. Story, 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 story. Interaction, interaction, interaction. But it has to be about you. And then my next question was... When I read some of the chapters in your your book, you said it was not a creative writing story. Correct. And I feel like um, I'm having a hard time distinguishing between that and a creative writing story. I feel like sometimes when I write, it's too dramatic and it's too like too story like, if you know what I mean. Like it seems like yeah, you're reading yeah. a book. I don't know. Yeah. So you just have to find a balance. That's just that's called iterating through drafts. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Um, and then my next question was, um, can I use my personal statement to write about the kind of doctor I want to be? You tell no. me. What What do you, What do you mean by that? <laughs> like, if I spend, uh, like, when I say the kind of doctor I want to be, like, if I want to be like a patient care, patient centered doctor, uh, or like. I want to be a more like compassionate doctor, et cetera, about the qualities that I want that the qualities that I think I'm going to bring into medicine or something. Okay. So the, those are two different questions and I'm, I'm glad I clarified because again, going toward your earlier comment about how being a CNA has led to you being a better caretaker the goal of the personal statement is not to highlight all the qualities that you think are necessary to be a doctor and go, oh, I have compassion. Oh, I have empathy. Oh, I have hardworking. Oh, I have uh, team player skills, whatever. Right? A lot of students, a lot of students do that. They'll basically make a list of all the qualities they think are important to be a doctor and then make sure they highlight all of those qualities in a personal statement. So when you ask about what kind of doctor you want to be, make sure that you're not just doing buzzword, 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 skill, 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 and ooh, I have all of these skills, therefore, obviously, I should be a doctor. Again, read the book. Conclusion, typically, the, the personal statement is why do you want to be a doctor? Not what kind of doctor do you want to be, whether specialty-wise or trait-wise. It's not, do you think you're good enough to be a doctor? It's why do you want to be a doctor? That's my take on it. Other people disagree. That's okay. They're allowed to. I have my take. It works for me. Why do you want to be a doctor? Notice how it's not, what kind of doctor do you want to be? And yet, the conclusion I typically reserve for very aspirational, big picture, future looking thoughts of how do you want to impact the world as a doctor? And some of those qualities can come out there about your patient-centered compassion buzzword, buzzword, buzzword stuff there. 
just be careful with that. Okay. I have another question. Um, so like when you said that the activity section and personal statement are two different things, right? Yep. So like if I were to write about my CNA experience in my activity section and I didn't put it most meaningful, but then it's meaningful in my personal statement, would that be like fine? Mm-hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Um, also, um, I know you mentioned something about like um, making sure to write about my experiences, but in one section of my personal statement, I wrote about like, since I used to be a scribe in the ER and I wrote about how that doctor patient interaction um, impacted me. Yep. I, I don't know if that's. Yeah. So, so scribing to me is shadowing on steroids, right? It's, it's very, very heavy shadowing where you're working, doing stuff. And my take is that shadowing experiences don't work well for a personal statement for that exact reason that you just mentioned, that all you're doing is describing what you saw and then trying to reflect on, ooh, Dr. Smith really has great empathy and I want to be like Dr. Smith. It's just not super impactful. Again, going back to your earlier comment about being a CNA showed me how to be a better caretaker and how do I, or where do I talk about what kind of doctor I want to be, compassionate, empathetic, patient-centered, etc. You are focused on traits and skills. I just, I just know it, right? <laughs> and so when you say one section of my personal statement is about watching that patient-physician interaction, all you're doing there is highlighting traits slash skills that you saw the doctor employing and how you want to be like that doctor or you think you have the skills necessary to be like that doctor. It's just not a very impactful, here's why I want to be a doctor. (laughs) I've seen this story play out thousands of times. I've read thousands of personal statements. I've seen this story. And and the story of, I have the skills, here are the skills, 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 all of the skills, just, it doesn't make for a good personal statement to me. I want to know the story of why you are here. Why are you spending all of this money, spending all of this effort, to become a doctor. It's not because you think you're smart enough and compassionate enough and empathetic enough and hardworking enough and team player enough, all of those things. It's because you have, hopefully, the ones who are successful doing this, you have put yourself in situations being around patients and that just motivates the heck out of you. Seeing the impact that healthcare, that medicine, that physicians have on patients and how you want to do that too. That's the story that just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Not, oh boy, here's another student who thinks they're hardworking enough. Right. <laughs> um, I know in your comment you said how healthcare impacted the patient. But what's the difference between you talking about the impact you left on a patient? Like, is that being like to all, oh, here's a list of skills that I have and why no. you should... No, because because impacting a patient isn't. I was hardworking and diligent enough to do this, right? You could definitely do it poorly, but impacting a patient is that's. I mean, that's that's the goal of this, showing that impact. And then another question I had, um, also with my CNA work. Um, so, like, what if you had a negative patient interaction, yeah. but? Like it taught you something really valuable. That I that would be something great to write on. What? <laughs> so so let's talk about um, a lesson learned. Yeah. Again, very common tack to take, uh, especially in the activity sections, but also comes out in a personal statement. Through this experience, I learned that you have to be empathetic and caring and a good listener and X, Y, or Z. Trait, trait, skill, skill, list, check off, check off, check off, check off. That's the, that's the only point of those, I learned that. I was taught that. 
like the takeaways, the, those sort of lesson learned statements, I I like, explicitly tell students like just completely avoid them because all you're doing is trying to sell to the medical schools. Look what I learned about being a doctor. Psh, you don't even have to teach me this. Just like mark me off for that for that lecture in med school because I'm good. Don't need it. <laughs> so negative interactions in general, I tell students to stay away from. Because negativity is not fun to read. And I question students who spend, hopefully, months writing a personal statement and still end up just talking negative, 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 negative. Don't have to be negative to still write about why you want to do something. You can avoid the negative aspect and still focus on the positive that came out of the negative. But the lesson learned stuff is usually, I learned that to be a good doctor, you have to do X, Y, or Z. And I'm showing you, I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I have X, Y, or Z. Please accept me. I don't know. I feel like I, I always fall into the trap of like the lesson learn. Um, just because I feel like not. Because not it's, wanna... it's easy. It's lazy. And it doesn't take a lot of deep reflection to go, what did I learn from this? Right? It's just, it's just easy. It's a lot more work to do some deeper inner reflection of like, who, what has this made me as a person? Right, the impact that I had on it or the impact it had on me. That's some deeper like therapy level stuff. So you're saying like to go in deeper and the impact and how it changed you? What's, what's the different? I'm having a hard time distinguishing between that versus the lesson learned. Couldn't you still like, yeah, I'm having a hard time understanding the difference between that. You just go, go watch more of my videos, <laughs> read my books. And you'll see lots of examples. At the end of the day, lessons learned are focused on a list that you have created of the skills and traits you think are necessary to be a doctor. I want you to throw that list away. It's not important. Reflection and doing a deep reflection, on the other hand, is who you are as a person, not compared to some list that you've created, but who you are as a person and how something has motivated you or impacted you in your own words, not on some arbitrary list that anyone can go Google top 20 traits necessary to be a good doctor. I think those were all my questions. Um, yeah, thank you so much. All right, so you got some work to do. <laughs> uh, if you need help with your personal statement with any of that, we do have advising services, not something I normally talk about um, uh, on these shows. It's not my, my goal of these shows is to just give as much information as possible without talking about advising services. I'm concerned about, about you, though. So if you need some help, let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll help you out. Um, the other big hurdle in this whole process is the MCAT. Have you taken the MCAT yet? Uh, I'm taking it in April 9th. April 9th. And how are you preparing for the MCAT? Um, oh, you want the like, exact detail and stuff? No. Just, are, are, you, oh, are you doing uh, a course? Are you studying on your own? What are you doing? Oh, so I'm studying on my own. I just see you, UWorld and the AMC um, materials. Awesome. All right. So UWorld is great. Lots of questions. The AAMC material is a must doing those full-length exams. If you need any extra full-length exams, go sign up for a free Blueprint account. If you haven't already, you get a free full-length with Blueprint, and they're considered the, the best third-party exams outside of the AAMC. So go check those out. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, good luck to you.